Hello and welcome to our March demo of Workrite. I'm Chris Jones, the Technical Director at Postrite, and this month we'll be running through the features and benefits of the Workrite system again and also give you a little taste of some of the latest courses that we've been working on. Uh, with me I've got Ryan Church who heads up our Workrite sales team. Uh, he's got a vast experience in helping clients get the best out of their health and safety systems. If you've got any questions during the presentation, please don't hesitate to pop them in the Q&A box on your right-hand side, uh, and then at the end we'll get through as many as we can uh, and uh, see how much time we've got left. So without further ado, over to you, Ryan. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, yes, third of three presentations on the, the Workright system. As Chris has mentioned, we're going to go into to more detail about the, the upcoming courses, but uh, I would like just to take everybody through sort of the, the features and functions of the the, the primary um, course that we, we run, which is our assess right DSE training and assessment course, because that demonstrates all of the uh, not only the training and test features, but also the the assessment functionality, which we can apply to the, the, the back end of any of the courses. So if I take you straight into the system, on your screen you've got um, uh, the home screen of an administrator of our demo system. Um, as the administrator, I have got all these functions down the left hand side, which is my reporting suite. I've got my dashboard in the middle of the screen as well. Um, and on the right hand side, I've got some quick links and quick functions over on the right hand side. Um, if I was an end user, I would only see um, the logo of my company, top left, and the list of courses that I'm being asked to complete. Now, I think we've got is it 14 or 15 courses attached to this particular system. Most of our customers run with anywhere between sort of three and six, but we are having more and more customers going for what we tend to term an all-you-can-eat type package, which just means access to everything. And then at the beginning of the process, the end user will complete a training matrix to effectively self-allocate them to the courses that are pertinent to their job role. In the example we have here, I simply have access to all the ones that um, are, are relative for this demonstration. So there are three levels of access to the system. Administrator, as we're logged in here, an end user, as I've, uh, as I've explained, will only see their own training, but we also have a middle level, level of access, which is somebody that we call a client manager. Now, they would see administration features, um, but only for the, the number of people that they're responsible for. So in this example here, if I was a, a client manager, student, Joe Bloggs, and Ryan Churchill um, would, would all be people that were within my responsibility. However, if there was other people in the system, um, they just simply wouldn't show on my uh, on my uh, dashboard home screen and, all, and in any of my reports either. If I take you through the end user's experience, um, they would have received uh, a login details email with a link and their username and password. They would have accessed the username and password, the username being their email address, password being automatically generated, and they would have logged into this page seeing only the courses that they're being asked to do. Um, there would be a box in the middle of the page saying, in my, exa in my um, case, hi Ryan, please complete the training courses above, and I would complete the, whichever ones are relative to my role. But if DSE was one of the courses, we call it assess right, so you've probably noticed many of the things that we do tend to get a right on the end, and our DSE course gets the, uh, the assess right brand name. You can call the course anything you wish. Most, a lot of our customers go for DSE training assessment or the, or the company name, DSE training and assessment. But once the, the end user accesses the course, they are asked to complete a seven module process. Um, you can see here each of the modules are orange and ticked because I have previously completed them for demonstration purposes rather than taking everybody through every single slide of the course right now. But if the end user, when the, sorry, when the end user first uh, accesses the course, these will each be grey and they must be completed sequentially. So I couldn't complete modules three before one and two were completed. However, I can part complete, and if I should get to the end of module two and need to take a phone call or go to a meeting, the system will make modules, will save where I've got to basically, and one and two will be orange and ticked, and I can continue from module three when I next log in. Incidentally, if I don't complete the course, or if anyone doesn't complete the course within a, a designated period of time, so maybe a couple of weeks, they will receive a series of automatic reminders until they do so. Um, a Effectively, most of our, our customers will go for a, a two-week period, then, then, then a week, and then potentially a, a further week, which could escalate the um, notification to their line manager, potentially, to say, this particular person has been notified three times to do their training, and they have not yet completed. And I'll show you shortly a, a list of reports on how that can be demonstrated, either to the, the line manager or centrally as the administrator. So the end user's experience, I am being asked to complete 
the training course. Now the first module is an introduction as to how the page works, and for those um, people that have different uh, or, or read different, a better uh, color, different colors better in different backgrounds, we can change the the whole system into maybe a black on pink. It's sometimes from an accessibility point of view that can be quite beneficial for people. For the purposes of today, I'm going to stay with the default settings. But the first, sl second slide, sorry, is saying why workstation safety is important. It's then taking me on to how can I actually be at risk from the workstation. Each time this icon here on the left hand side pops up, this is basically telling me to click on the screen, uh, sorry, click on the image to see the next example. But if I didn't actually read that and I was continuing to click through without taking on board the information, the next button is disabled and the screen is telling me to please follow the on-screen instructions to continue. I think that just gives you a little example there as the level of interactivity of the course, like I say, to make sure that the person is taking on board the information. Two more slides on this particular module. It's a quick summary of the first section. And then that first module will go orange and ticked and I will be able to access the second uh, module. The first five modules of the course, these and this particular course, these are the training element. So going through this content, I'm basically making sure the person is aware of how their workstation should be set up. And then there is a test. Now the test, there is a pool of 26 questions, 20 of which are randomly ordered and randomly selected, so that we're basically ensuring the person understands the content before they are able to move on to their assessment. So what we're effectively doing in this course is making them a competent self-assessor for DSE before they are carrying out their self-assessment. And, uh, and just to sort of make it clear, I mean, we're all aware that a DSE assessment must be completed by a competent person. This is effectively making them a competent self-assessor. And a few examples of how that looks. Um, the computer section um, introduces what that section is all about. But what the screen then does is it effectively says, if I'm a touch typist working from documents, potentially that workstation uh, setup is is more appropriate for the way I work. If I'm not a touch typist working with documents, potentially that workstation is more appropriate. And the whole way through the course is making sure I understand how my workstation should be set up. And um, I, I've seen this being rolled out in a, an open plan office environment and it's, it's quite interesting to see when people are going through, particularly um, you can see when they're getting to the screen, the, the slides where they've been told to adjust their workstation because you can see people sort of shuffling in their chairs, moving their keyboards, adjusting the dis... ...end user. Okay, so if I just take you back to the beginning of the course, um, see here all of the modules are completed, the test is actually passed, and I've completed one assessment. But on this demo system, I'm being asked to complete a number of assessments because I'm in multiple locations. Now, I don't know if any of you have got people that work from, from more than one location. But in this example here, I have a, an, uh, an office space which is called software. My home environment is called home workers. And I have a, a third location called assess run. I'm going to just complete the middle one here, which is my office space location. Same principle, orange and ticked means that section is completed and grey means it's not complete. But what we're looking at now is this is the DSE assessment. The left hand side, these are the section headings. The right hand side, these are the questions for each of the DSE assessment sections. So if I sort of um, scale straight down to the Your Health General section, the first question in this section reads, once we get there, I've got a slightly slower connection today. Um, do you experience head, neck or backache whilst working at your computer which you think may be associated with its use? Now this is an assessment, so there's no right or wrong answer here, but the end user, remember, is a competent self-assessor before they get to this particular um, section of the, the, the course. So we know they're competent and if they were to answer this question that they never get pain, then there's no action against that particular question in the assessment. So they wouldn't receive a response, there's no notification to anybody because there's no problem. They would, however, receive a reminder to reassess potentially in year two, year three, year four, whatever your um, DSC policy procedure is. If the end user answers sometimes, um, we know that anywhere between sort of 50 and 70 percent of people tend to answer these, these questions with a sometimes answer. We'd recognize that that is a small to medium size issue, but there's, there's some sort of response or some sort of guidance to the end user needs to be 
attributed to this particular question. So what we would invariably set up for a customer is if the end user answers to this question, they sometimes um, experience head, neck or backache, we'd automate a response to them saying, you've said you sometimes get pain, if this continues or worsens, please raise this with your line manager, please raise it with a DSE assessor, please speak to health and safety, occupational health, whoever is responsible within your organisation. And it's really important to make sure that each of these questions, and particularly the response text, is, is configured to your company's policies, your procedures and your resources. Because we've got to make sure that the system is meeting your objectives and not creating you more work than is actually necessary. If the end user answers often to the question, do you experience head, neck or backache, remembering that they're a competent self-assessor, we, uh, we can be pretty confident that that person actually understands that this is actually uh, a particular problem for them. And we, we'd probably suggest that you want to hear all of your hear of all of the end users that have often got a pain at their workstation. So in this example we would normally trigger an email to either their DSE assessor, the central administrator, occupational health, health and safety, again anybody within your organization that is um, uh, responsible for resolving that particular problem and that can be site specific. So if you've got a dozen or more sites across the country, across Europe, across the world, we can make sure that the, the trigger emails are going to the relevant person uh, responsible for the person that's completing the assessment. So if you can imagine going through the DSE assessment in full, um, once they get to the end and they, there's an option, we can add a feedback section, you don't have to have feedback, you can just send on other comments. Once that is all completed, this box here goes bright green and clicks, uh, sorry, states click to submit. They then submit their responses, sorry, they then submit their assessment and they receive an automatic email with the response text that they have uh, triggered um, dependent on the answers they've answered in the assessment. Any often or bigger issues that are triggered to the relevant people would also be uh, sent at that point as well. So the end user's experience is complete uh, once they have been, uh, once they've completed their assessment and been given their guidance. If there's anything in the guidance that is given the further actions, they have a record of that and I'll go into the reporting section in a second so you can see if they have, um, uh, if there's anything outstanding. Um, but to give you an idea on timescales in this particular course, modules one, two, three, and sorry, one, two, three, four, and five, they're the training element. They take between 12 and 15 minutes. The test itself takes between two and three minutes, and the assessment between five and eight. So the average time for this particular course, including assessment, is a fraction under 25 minutes, which I think is a is, is quite appropriate for um, asking somebody to complete that. For the first time, definitely, but potentially on an annual basis, you may not want them to do the training and test each time, just an assessment, in which case year two, three, four, whenever it is, you're only asked them to spend between sort of five and eight minutes to reassess. So that really is the end user's experience if you were looking at just one course. If you're looking at multiple courses, of course, they, um, they will um, have a timeline or a series of automated reminders for the relevant courses. I'm just going to quickly going to go into the, 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 the management um, uh, system behind that particular course before I take you through the other courses because just to keep it all sort of uh, relevant to the DSE assessment. So as the administrator or line manager or the DSE assessor, someone with any level of administration responsibility, there are three things that you need to do on a regular basis. The first of which is to make sure that your starters, levers and movers are updated. So if you've got a small company, anything sort of up to maybe two, 250, maybe even as many as 500 staff, um, it's, it's, it's quite normal for a customer to manage that in a manual, a manual process. We upload all of your users at the beginning, um, but if you're receiving a, a spreadsheet, an update from your HR team on a regular basis, it's quite simple to deactivate somebody. You'd find their details on the system. Um, I would find the particular person. I would then decide that this person is going on a sabbatical for any period of time, so I want to deactivate them from the system. I would inactivate them. It then ask me, is there a reason for this person being inactivated? I'm going to go on a sabbatical. And if I wanted to, I can schedule this person's automatic active status. And I can also, on that date, let's say they were on a sabbatical for, for three months. When they return to work in three months, the system can automatically notify them to reassess because they are back to work. And all those processes are completely configurable. However, uh, with an increasing number of our customers, we, can, we are actually automating a link from HR systems, from internal LMSs, regardless 
happening user data so we can set up a, a web service so there can be a, an automatic update of starters, levers and movers, all, all optional um, at setup stage or any point of using the system. So if you're interested in those, please do ask questions. The second of the three things that an administrator needs to do on this system is to notify people to do their training. So I've just clicked on groups on the left hand side of the screen. What this is showing me is all of the groups within our, this particular system. And if I decided that I want the whole of London to go live, I would find the group called London. I can see there's 63 people in that group and I want to notify those 63 people to do their training. I can check the list, make sure that everybody's accurate if I wanted to deactivate any number of people for whatever reason. I've deactivated three there just to show you how it works. I can then notify those now 60 people to do their training and what this is going to do is it populates with the configured email that we've drafted with your implementation um, but it's also editable at this stage so um, let's say um, it was no longer Catherine that needed to be responsible at this particular stage um, maybe it's myself um, that could be editable at this particular stage here but you notice at the beginning that populated with the, the, the stencil email by clicking send now that list of 60 people are going to be in a reminder loop and they're going to be in a reminder loop to do the training until they actually complete it. I said at the beginning um, usually customers go for a two week, one week, one week reminder schedule but that is entirely flexible to your policies, procedures and resources. Um, some of our customers actually remind their users daily um, until they get the training done but again they, they know the culture better than we do and they know that that works for their staff. Your choice, we just help you set it up. The third thing to do on a regular basis is to make sure that assessment issues are resolved and, and dealt with as, as efficiently as possible. Now, remember the, the small to medium sized stuff is all dealt with with automatic response, so the end users guided how to resolve those issues themselves. But the bigger stuff, the oftens, these generate this, um, this pie chart here. So I can see here that Student9, Joe Bloggs and Ryan Churchill, they are three people that have got outstanding issues. And I want to see Student9 because he's got two outstanding issues. I say he but you might notice shortly that this potentially is a, is a she. I'll again explain that in a bit. But I can see that Stu has done the training, the five modules on this date here. They have done the assessment on this date here. They passed the, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the, the, the course on this date, the test on this date with 100% pass mark and the assessment was completed on the same day, uh, slightly later, um, with two outstanding issues. To see their assessment I would click there but if I wanted to I can print uh, or export the whole assessment to PDF and it looks like this, you've got all of the, the user information, the username, the date, the time, everything and you've got their questions and answers and also in red the responses that the system has sent them. Some customers like to print this out and take it to the workstation when they are completing a, a face to face assessment after assess right. Your, your choice but again just a feature I wanted to show you. So if I did want to see or resolve the um, Stu's assessment issues within the system, I would click on the assessment uh, option just here. Uh, what it then does, it's going to show me the whole of Stu's assessment and I mentioned just now that you might recognize that this is actually a female rather than a male. To the question, are you pregnant, Stu has answered yes. So we can, uh, I think we can assume that Stu is actually female. Um, but what I would, I'll come back to that in one moment. We can see here these are the two outstanding issues. These, these are the ones that, that currently need an action. But everything on this assessment, these were all issues with Stu's assessment. And they're all closed. Now the majority of them are closed automatically because we have guided Stu how to self-resolve those. This little icon here signifies a manual note has been added and it is demo data. So forgive me if uh, the, the wording in here is um, a little inaccurate. But for the, for the question, are you pregnant? Stu's answered yes. It's currently in progress, so I'd suggest Yep, there we can see there we've arranged a, um, a pregnancy risk assessment. So I'm going to add a note here. So PRA uh, has been completed and all is fine. By adding the note, the system is then going to automatically put in for me the date, the time and the person logged in there. So 13th of the 3rd, 2015, I'm logged in as the admin account. I would suggest that that particular issue is closed. But that manual input there is only necessary for the larger issues. So the stuff that you decide at implementation stage that you want to be notified and you want the system to leave open for somebody to administer. 
Everything else can be dealt with with automatic guidance. And we have got some customers that automatically close everything in the assessment, even the often typed questions, but with some very specific response text to the end user. Beyond that, you've got your reporting suite. Um, I will just demonstrate quickly one of the, the non-completion type reports. I pick my assess right course. I pick the number of people per page. Let's go for 100. I set the filter to group the people by location on this example. I want all locations. I want to find the people that have been sent the login details email, but they have not yet logged in. The naughty list. Okay, Angela, Mark, and Jeff and Ella are on this system multiple times, but this list of people, they were sent the login details on this date. We know they've received their automatic reminders. I can, if I wanted to, select all users and email them from this particular page here, but we know they've received their, their reminders and notifications. What I can then do is export to Excel and potentially name and shame or however you want that process to work, send that list to the line managers. Again, whatever you're looking to achieve from the information. Another quick report I'll just dip into here is an assessment analyzer. What this is now showing me is the DSE assessment section one, the DSE assessment section two, all the way down to three, four, five, onto section 14. But what it's doing for every single question is giving me the volume of people that have answered that particular answer or given that particular answer. So, do you experience head, neck, or backache? The same example I gave you earlier. Never, often, sometimes, 26, 34, or 32. I want to see those 34 people that have said often. I click on the often. There's the list of people. On the right-hand side, I maybe want to find out if there's any trend to the location. Software group, London, London, Berwick, Midlands. Okay, that's very headline information, but there may be a trend there straight away, which can allow me as the administrator to, to focus my time in the area that's actually required. There's a whole host of reports. There's 40 plus different ways of filtering the information. It's a SQL Server database, so all those cells of information are reportable. We've just got multiple filters to be able to find that data. So if I take you through the, the list of courses, um, we've covered assess right, but we've got an asbestos awareness course. This is a reasonably recent one for us. This is suitable for people that may come into contact with asbestos, not people that are known to be working with asbestos, but it's very suitable for, for housing trust and councils are very interested in that particular course. Conflict resolution is, a, is a quite a recent release of ours, again dealing with um, members of the public, front of house reception and security are, are very appropriate for this. Also um, people that are dealing with inbound or outbound telephone calls as well, so dealing with uh, aggression over the phone, that course covers that very well. Moving on to uh, a, a COSH course, so COSH awareness, again, people that may come into contact with uh, substances that are hazardous to health, not people that are working in labs and mixing chemicals, but it's an awareness course. All of these courses lend themselves very well to awareness. A couple of HR type courses, um, Data Protection Act, um, and Environmental Awareness and Equality and Diversity. Um, those three courses there, um, the HR teams are, are are very popular with at the moment. Then we've got a driver awareness course. We actually um, have developed this course with uh, um, NRL, the National um, Research Laboratory, um, to provide all the information. Um, again, a lot of our customers use this as a way of getting across the driving policy, but they also have an assessment within the, the driving course to make sure the end user has the most appropriate insurance and MOT if they're driving their own car and they are suitable to drive for work. A few more. Feel Right is our stress awareness course, originally called Stress Right, but we felt that was inappropriate in the market to call a course on stress. Stress Right gives the wrong impression, so we term our course Feel Right. Again, an awareness course. We have got customers that have put an assessment on the end that, that um, reflects the, the 33 HSE stress assessment or stress measurement questions with the same functionality as the DSE assessment as well. Handle Right is our manual handling course suitable for the office based or low risk environment. Homeworkers is our DSE course for homeworkers. Okay, very similar to what I took you through just now, but the home environment is more appropriate to the, uh, sorry, the, the, the visuals are more appropriate to the home environment. I don't know about anybody else, but that rings very true for me at the moment as a young child that can be screaming whilst you're trying to do your work in the office. That course covers those types of um, issues that you may be having and it goes through isolation and make points of contact because working from home can be quite lonely sometimes. Five more on this list here, we've got Mobile Right is our mobile workers course, covers everything from um, driving as you can see, 
data security. This particular picture here I find quite appropriate because there's been a number of times I personally have been travelling on trains and someone opens up a laptop or tablet computer next to you and you think, crikey, I hope that content isn't isn't sensitive because it's very easy to read over the person's shoulder should that should that be a uh, you're that, that way inclined at all, but um, it's, it covers the, the problems and pitfalls of actually doing so. NEM is our new and expected mother's course, appropriate for the, the lady herself and her team to go through the, the various different changes in, in, the, in the workload and the environment that are required. And then we've got OSA and OSA LM, that's Office Health and Safety Awareness, and then Office Health and Safety Awareness for line managers, two courses that cover um, the general health and safety for an office environment and then if you want to go into more detail around slips, trips and falls this is a, quite a recent release of ours a course you can see it's quite a short one here on slips, trips and falls. One last course I want to show you we're actually releasing on Monday and it's a course for travel safety um, and I but effectively I had to go to a different browser here to show you it because as I say not released until Monday but this course is, is aimed at anybody that is well, traveling on business, whether that be uh, domestically or internationally. Um, it covers things such as um, um, planning journeys, if you have got to go abroad, do you need a visa, do you need to, the types of processes that you need to carry out before actually traveling on business. And as I say, that's released on Monday, so if anybody is keen to see that course in more detail, please do let us know. Beyond that, folks, um, that's that's the list of courses. Um, let me go to the right page for you. I just wondered if there might be any questions out there. Chris, have we had anything in? Ryan, sorry, I was uh, stuck on mute there. Um, so we have had a few questions in, actually. Um, first one is whether it is possible on the home page for you to change the number of... Um, users that you'd see within that pie chart. Okay, yeah, um, it defaults to the top three people, um, but you can simply by clicking here, look at the top five, all the way up to the top ten. I mean there's only three people with issues on this particular system, but that pie chart would grow to having ten chunks of cheese or ten slices of the pie, pie if you like, and it would list the, the top ten people here. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question, but yes, that number can be changed. Anything else? Brilliant. Um, Yes. Is there a minimum number of users for Workright? Okay. Um, I've been with Postrite now for, for nearly nine years, and we've, we've often worked on the principle if a company has got 50 or more people, um, then it becomes sort of financially viable. But we actually recently, in the last sort of six to 12 months, have been selling to customers that have got as few as 15 people, because we make it sort of uh, appropriate that if you're looking for 15 um, people to complete one course, why not do all of your health and safety training in one place? And they're looking at sort of sort of three, four, five, sometimes 10 courses for a smaller number of people. So anything from uh, as few as 15 people, but our largest customer um, has got over 73,000 staff. So the system does fit itself around um, the size of organization you are. It's, it's, it's completely uh, appropriate for whatever number you have. Any other th Anything else, Chris? Great, yeah we do, we've got one that I'll probably have to field actually and that's, uh, is it possible to spell check the notes as they're added um, and that's more of a sort of a development decision that we made uh, about 18 months ago because um, all modern browsers now have got inline uh, spell checking built into the browser so we actually took uh, that feature out as standard just because it was conflicting with uh, with, with the standard functionality um, so that's sort of built in uh, just by the nature of the web uh, nowadays uh, and we've got one more question Ryan from the field which is um, who is the personal travel safety course targeted at? Okay let me just take you back to it so we can see it being a visual person yeah okay so the the, the personal tra uh, personal safety while traveling sorry we, we retitled that it was personal travel safety at one point um, the personal personal safety while traveling is anybody that is traveling on business so if you're like I said earlier traveling domestically or internationally it is a way of covering let me just take you through to the first slide employers and employees of, sorry employers have a duty of care both morally and legally with regards to employee safety this course will provide information on safety issues that should be considered when traveling for work so this is covering the, the employers responsibility to provide the training but 
to answer the question directly, it's anybody that is going to be making a journey on behalf of their employer. And that can be a one-off to a training course or some other type of meeting or if they're traveling regularly, um, in which case it, I would suggest that they probably want to do this sooner rather than later. So hopefully that answers your question as well. Great. Great. Hopefully that covers it for um, those that are were interested. Um, I think that brings us nicely to one o'clock, so that's all we've got time for. Um, so um, hopefully you can come back to us uh, next month, uh, and um, we'll hopefully have well we will have some more exciting things to show you. Uh, so uh, with that, thank you very much, and see you in a month.